to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. For the time that I have, let me pick one of those attributes or one of those requirements that will help us manifest the glory of God. And I'll just give a charge on it and we'll pray. Hallelujah. John 11 and verse 40, Jesus was teaching. This was Jesus about to raise Lazarus. The Bible says how that he loved Lazarus. Now Lazarus was dead. And they came crying and were probing as to why Jesus did not come on time. And Jesus made a very instructive statement. He said, Jesus said to her, said I not unto thee, that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. You can see the glory of God manifesting as the power of God to raise the dead. But that you need to understand that your faith must be alive. I want to teach very briefly about faith. You know, I have discovered sincerely that most believers talk about faith most believers write books about faith even but there are very few people who truly understand bible faith hallelujah if you do not understand the subject of faith you will never truly be able to manifest the glory of god there is a relationship between your faith in god and the expression of the glory of god in and through your life if you're with me please shout amen four times in scripture the bible tells us i'll just read it through we may not have the time to project it for sake of for the sake of time so would i'll just read it so that we'll go to the main discourse the just the bible says shall live by faith four scriptures you may want to write this down very quickly Habakkuk chapter 2 1 verse 4 it tells us that the just lives by faith Habakkuk 2 1 4 Romans 1 17 also tells us that the just shall live even by his faith Romans 1 17 Galatians chapter 3 and verse 11 also repeats this that the just shall live by faith Galatians 3 11 finally Hebrews chapter 10 and verse Hebrews chapter 10 is that 38 that the just shall live by faith so four scriptures Habakkuk 2 4 Romans 1 17 Galatians 3 11 Hebrews 10 and verse 38 all of these scriptures point very clearly that the just lives by faith in Mark chapter 11, Mark chapter 11, from verse 22 to 24, theologically speaking, this is one of the classics on the discourse of Jesus about the subject of faith. He rebuked the three that would not produce and it withered. The disciples were perplexed. They wondered how a man could just speak to a tree and not use an axe or anything physical to fell it. And by in 24 hours, the tree would have withered. And Jesus was giving them an understanding. He said, have faith in God. Men like Papa Hagen would interpret this to mean have the faith of God. Next verse, 23. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall say to this mountain, Be thou removed and cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. The Bible leaves you with an assurance that he shall have whatsoever he saith. Next verse. Here is the law of faith. 
Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, it says when ye pray, believe that you receive them and thou shall have them. Are we together? Hebrews chapter 11 from verse 1, it says, Now faith is the substance, the tangibility of the things that you hope for. It calls it the evidence of the things not seen. The evidence, the purchasing power. Like, you can ask me, I can ask you to give me a bottle of water or get me a bottle of water. The moment I give you 100 naira or 200 naira, I didn't give you the bottle of water, but I gave you the power to purchase it. Is that true? That's what faith is, the currency that purchases spiritual realities for us in the realm of the spirit. It's called faith. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, Romans chapter 10, let's look at verse 17. Romans 10, 17. It says, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It tells you that faith is mobile. It can move from one place to the other. It can move from a location outside your spirit into your spirit. Faith cometh. Faith cometh. And the Bible says it comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Let's define faith. In very simple terms. What is faith? Please look up. Faith is not just believing. This is where many sincere believers get it wrong. Faith is more than believing. Believing is part of the process of faith. But faith is not believing. So many people tell you, I believe. That's wonderful. And you may be right. But just because you believe does not mean you have finished walking in keeping with the law of faith. I believe God. I believe I'll be healed. I believe I will prosper. I believe the land will be good for me. I believe my children will be blessed. There are many people believing and that is wonderful. But hear me, if all you do is just believe, meaning to agree, that is not enough. There are conditions. Listen, Every promise in scripture has very specific conditions connected to it for its manifestation. Believing is one of the requirements, but not the only requirement. Are we together? Let's define faith. Here is my definition of faith. That faith is the name given to the action that we take. The name given to the action that we take. Actions of obedience. Based on our conviction of who God is and the integrity of his word. Faith is the name given to the action of obedience that we take. Not just believing. The name given to the action of obedience that we take. That action is based on our conviction, number one, of who God is, and then the integrity of his word. This is Bible faith. Please, let me have two gentlemen. Just come here. I want to illustrate something. Any two gentlemen at all. Please, come. Thank you. Watch this. Let one of you stand here. I believe you can all see them. You just stand here. My friend, come stand. I want to show you what many believers do that we call faith. Now watch this. Let's assume this is what they both desire. Are we together? And now I have told you that I am benevolent enough to let you have this. It is my will and my desire for you to have in this instance this handkerchief. Now this gentleman when I ask you to come and pick it. Tell me you are coming. And tell me you believe me, but don't walk. Are you ready? Watch what many of us do. So, I am God in this example. Here is your healing. Here is your breakthrough. Here is your lifting. Here is the favor that I desire to give you. Like I said in my word, come and have it. Are you seeing now? I'm giving it to him. 
He believes that I'm not lying. And yet he does not have it. Five years, he's not had it. Ten years, he's not had it. Fifteen years, he's not had it. His pain now begins to build a theology about God that God cannot reward. Just because he has been 15 years practicing what he believes to be faith, he will mentor other people after his limitation that all it takes is to just believe. Now, I'm not being critical. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Then comes this fine young man who now understands what faith is. Now when I ask you, you speak and walk to me. The condition is that you walk to me. Come, pick this. In one year, he has gotten it. A result that this man desired for 20 years. And now you are wondering, this is unfair. Because faith is not just believing. Faith is fulfilling the condition attached to commit God. The Bible says, having the readiness to judge all disobedience, if your obedience is complete. In one word, faith is obedience. In one word, faith is obedience. In one word, faith is obedience. If there is no obedience component to your definition of faith, it is not Bible faith. There may be speaking. There may be crying. There may be praying. But if it does not culminate to obedience, in fact, you can even take action. If it's not an action of obedience, it is still not faith. Back to my example. One more time. Please stand, gentlemen. If I ask you to come here, walk to that gentleman. Come and pick this. He is taking action, but it's not an action of obedience. He will still suffer like the person who did not take action. Many people are taking action based on what they think should produce results. You don't just act the way you want. You act, you, I prophesied as I was commanded, not as I wanted. Are we learning? Thank you, gentlemen. God bless you. So faith in one word is obedience. Obedience to the scriptural requirements. The scriptural requirements that commit God to reveal his glory in you. Obedience to the scriptural requirements that commit God to reveal his glory in you. This is very powerful. That means for you to manifest Bible faith, you must understand what God has connect, has the, the conditions connected to every promise. Knowing the promise is not enough. You must understand the scriptural requirement that commits God for that promise to be made manifest. Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2. For sake of time, the Bible says, And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do, observe to do, not just to know, observe to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day. It says that the Lord thy God will set thee on high. This is the promise. Claiming that you will rise above the nations is wonderful, but it will only end you in frustration. There is a condition attached to it. And all these blessings shall come upon you and shall overtake you. Most believers have not paid attention to study the participatory roles that they have to play in committing God to reveal his glory in and through them. Whilst Ebed was ministering, I just sat there and I was enjoying the song but I was also enjoying the excellence. And I thought to myself, look at this man acting my message. I could see a display of competence, not just the spirituality. And you would think it's just grace. It is grace, but it is the enabling grace because something was done. 
excellence has an equation something plus something equals excellence are we together you will have to find out the price of competence and rehearsals and discipline and diligence that produce what you celebrated as the manifestation of the glory of God. Now, when you see the glory of God in dis on display, it doesn't look like anything was done to prepare them. Remember, the nation of Israel wanted to see the glory of God. And he told them, here is the condition. You are going to go through constraints for three days. Sanctifying yourself if it is that glory you want to see. There is always a condition. Please look up. You want to prosper in the kingdom and manifest the glory of God. It's not just about claiming prosperity and jumping up and down. There are laws that you must walk in keeping with that enable that dimension of glory to be revealed in you. For instance, the law of diligence. For instance, the law of relationships. For instance, the law of creativity. These are all principles that synergize themselves together. You want to excel in life. You have to work in keeping with the principles of competence. The discipline of mastery. The Bible says he that strives for mastery is not crowned unless and except he strives lawfully. Are we together? Wishing and hoping that things change will be a total waste of time. Wishing and hoping and superstitiously just waiting for things to change is a total waste of time. We have to understand that if we desire to see the glory of God revealed in our lives, we must understand the principle of faith, the principle of obedience. The Bible says that when men say there is a casting down, we will say there is a lifting up. It did not say we will think. It didn't say we will lift. It says we will say. So your words is part of the instruments of constructing that tower that you'll be lifted to. So you speak regardless what you see. You are declaring because the word of God says that your words is part of the ingredients that make for your greatness. That means the assignment to discipline and culture yourself to only speak words that are consistent with scripture is your participatory role in seeing that a great destiny happens. You cannot keep speaking words like one who is demonized and have the destiny of one who is disciplined in building with scripture. It cannot happen because remember, he sits upon a throne that is made of righteousness and justice. Are we learning? Yes, sir. Bible faith is based on two attributes of God. Please write it quickly. And then we will pray. You want to manifest Bible faith? It is predicated on two attributes of God. Very quickly. Attribute number one is called his integrity bible faith is hinged on two attributes of god number one his integrity the word integrity comes from the expression or the word integer sameness consistency numbers chapter 23 and verse 29 Numbers 23 and 29. Numbers chapter 19. Sorry. 23, 19. 23, 19. God is not a man that he should lie. That means men lie. Men don't lie because they are bad. They lie because they are men. It's a weakness in man that if not assisted through transformation, lying is something that is enshrined in men. For various reasons, they lie. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. That means he does not make mistakes. 
Had he said, and shall he not do it? Had he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Do you know what this means? That every time God speaks, he submits to what he says. When God speaks, even him is bound by what he has said. In ancient times, kings were bound by their words. If they spoke foolishly, they would have to pay the price of stamping a foolish statement or speaking foolishly. Remember in the Bible, there were kings who even were willing to give half of their kingdom for silly reasons. It was lack of wisdom in a king that removed the head of a prophet called John the Baptist. For the dance of a young girl, he was willing to give even half of his kingdom without counsel. And he could not reverse it again. And John died. That's how powerful the word of a king is. Everybody say integrity. Can I tell you this? There are men who are sincere but they do not have integrity. Not because they are bad. It takes a lot of factors to have integrity. I can tell you I will meet you by six. And my car spoils. Regardless the excuse. With respect to that appointment, I did not show integrity. Correct? Now, that's not, that does not mean I am bad or evil. I, am, I was incapacitated. Factors happen beyond my control. But the Bible says when God speaks, he has examined all the factors. There is no such thing as speaking and later he says, Oh, I, I didn't know you are from Plateau State to, for me to have made such a statement that I will lift you. I didn't know your situation was peculiar. I didn't know that there would be a pandemic. God is not a man. That means you can trust what he says. This is powerful because see, dear people of God, there are no guarantees in life. Nobody gives you any guarantee anywhere. Young people, listen. Waiting for someone to guarantee your success is a total waste of time. There are no guarantees. Your guarantee is the integrity of God. God will send you to places with no human assistance. Your guarantee is that word. You will foolishly move as he speaks. Your guarantee is that word. He is a God of integrity. God can be trusted. Let me repeat it. God can be trusted. Don't get used to the disappointment you face from men. I promise you this, I didn't do it. I promise you that I didn't do it. And you, you, you put God to join that queue. And you believe that just like this one disappointed me. I, I assure you and I bring you good news. Dear Plato, God can be trusted. My Bible and your Bible is full of stories of people who God spoke to. And as at the time he spoke to them, there was nothing in their life that looked like what he said. But the one with integrity had spoken. Abraham, I will make your name great. I will bless them that bless you and curse him that curse you. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. He met a young boy hiding called Gideon and he called him a mighty man of valor. Can I tell you this? When we study scripture, it gives us an opportunity to vet the integrity of God. God is not afraid to allow you probe his integrity. The Bible is a compendium of God's integrity that you search for yourself and if you search well, you will conclude that this God can be trusted. Somebody shout, say, God can be trusted. Shake away unbelief. Say, God can be trusted. Regardless what I see, God can be trusted. Regardless the medical report, God can be trusted. I know you are sitting right now on a time bomb health-wise in, in the form of a medical report, but God can be trusted. Apostle, you're speaking like this because you do not know the huge bills that stand before me. I will still tell you to your face, God can be trusted. Is someone learning tonight? There are probably men of God here, respectfully speaking, 
You are saying, oh, the reason I'm not succeeding in ministry is because I'm unjust or because I'm not from the plateau by, by tribe or whatever. Believe me, those things may be very sincere consolation, but that's not the reason. God can be trusted. Ask the man Daniel. He reigned through the dispensation of three to four kings. What is on you is what determines what is around you. You can create through your faith a system of exemption. Are we together? Yes. I want to drum it to your heart. He has integrity and he can be trusted. There are men who can fail you. There are men who can disappoint you. There are offices you may enter in Nigeria where someone will tell you, I promise you, by this time next week, if you are still in this position, call me stupid. And three years later, you are still there. God can be trusted. Someone turned that into a prayer in one minute. God can be trusted. His integrity. Go ahead and pray. Please pray. God can be trusted. Shake away unbelief. Lord, I believe what you told me about my children. I believe what you told me about my health. You told me death will not take me just like that. I believe you, regardless the symptoms in my body. I believe you told me you will prosper me upon the plateau, that my life will be an expression of your glory. You told me you will help me even politically. You told me you will help my children, that none of them will be lost. As it is now, right now, it looks like all my children are going haywire. But in the name of Jesus, I trust you. There are kings, there are kingdoms, there are mountains and there are thrones. Only a Shua will reign forever. To his kingdom there'll be no end. There are kings, there are kings. There are mountains and there are thrones, but only a shoe will reign forever. To his kingdom there'll be no end. Listen, there are names, there are offices, and even in that regard they are powerful. For instance, the president of any nation is powerful. Even as men, they can change your life with one signature. I've had the honor of meeting men of tremendous influence. And in one moment, when they rub off their credibility on you, it can literally alter the seasons of your life. If men can do that, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the monarch of the universe. The one who is not threatened by the pride of man. They can say, where is your God? And he's still seated on the throne. If he vows a vow concerning your life, then let God be true. And all men liars. Let God be true. And all systems liars. Your assignment is to believe in that God. Please sit down. Only a shoe will reign forever. Can I tell you? Can I tell you? Based on wisdom, it is wiser to trust the one who does not have a date of birth. The mere fact that any man can present to you his date of birth already tells you there is a tendency for compromise in his ability to show integrity there is one who we can search from end to end we will never find his date of birth who gave birth to him the bible says in the beginning not from the beginning in the beginning the beginning is a person listen you know what i'm doing to you tonight i'm shaking away unbelief 
because the strength of Satan is your senses. He will flush your financial situation, your health situation, and bring you to a point where you feel it is not worth it trusting God. God, is it true that you really sent me to Joss? My life has not shown it yet. Is it true that you called me into ministry? I'm tired of this expression of shame. Only a shoe will reign forever. To his kingdom there'll be no end. Listen, I say this with all humility and to the glory of the name of the Lord. It was in one room the Spirit of God began to show me the visions of the things that he's doing through my life today. From that one room, he said, I will take you to the nations. I will take you before kings. I believed him. Stupid enough to believe him. Childish enough to believe him. With no human connection, I believed. God be true. How will it happen? Don't be like Mary. How shall these things be? Seeing that I know not a man. Every time you are afraid, remember the person talking. Every time you are afraid, remember the person talking. He told me, as you travel around, you will have the power to heal the sick. You will have the power to cast out devils. I believed, I believe. He told Joshua, no man will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. So when an angel appeared before Joshua, he removed his sword. He said, who are you? I will kill you with the word that was given to protect me. And he said, no. He had to explain why he came. Can I tell you this? God has integrity. Let me remind you again. God is a God of integrity. If he has told you, he will do it. Did you hear what I said? One scripture and then the other attribute. Genesis 21 verse 1. Someone by this night, you will go back to your old notes where God told you things that didn't make sense. You will dust those notes again and say, even though this note is 10 years old, Lord, let's revisit your word again. I'm sorry for my unbelief. I, I thought you were not aware of the pandemic, but right now, my faith is alive again. I wish you could read with me. As many who can see it projected, let's read together in concert. Ready? One to read. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, integrity. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. Listen, every man you see in ministry, in business, in government, in academics, any man doing anything uncommon today, I can tell you, probe them and if they are sincere, they will tell you. There was no guarantee whatsoever. Ah. Lion of Judah, my trust is in you. I am that I am, my trust is in you. You're the Lion of Judah, my trust is in you. I put them away, my trust is in you. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray, pray, pray for your destiny. The face of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.